Hello, friends. I'm very glad to see you here again. The work on the Grini continues, and I will now relic metal and plastic parts. In order to do this correctly, I made my own parts, or modified the factory ones. The thing is that factory bridges, modern factory bridges, they have slightly, slightly different shapes. Therefore, I modified the bridge, and I made the tail pieces myself and I covered all this with a decorative coating, without an intermediate layer of copper. You will now see how it was done. Therefore, I will not keep you waiting. Time to start. Let's go! If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, then press the subscribe button and ring the bell. I also remind you that on my Patreon account there are tutorial series for painting and relics. There I share my technologies in great detail, and I'm showing and telling all my ways to do this. If we look at the photo, we can see that there are nickel abrasions in some places and they are very recognizable. Then, the screws of the magnetic drives, they are so rusty, nickel has worn off from the impact of hands, and the metal has become dark and acquired such a rusty tint. The first thing that I have are nickel-free pickup lids. They are new, they are very well carved, and have just the right thickness, the right shape, precise enough to make a good enough copy for. And we need 12 magnetic drives. In order for us to get exactly the same frames as in the original, we must go through all the technological stages. Well, I think our composition is already prepared, so I will immerse our lids there. Let's see what happens there in 10 minutes. In general, we will prepare it for about 40 minutes in a water bath. Our tailpiece was nickel-plated very interestingly and very quickly. Look, what a beautiful nickel color. This is mega cool. This is mega cool. Guys, the aluminum tailpiece that I made myself is nickel-plated with no copper layer. This is victory.
This is how it looks polished. And this is how it looks with a layer of nickel. Do you see the difference? Now we'll cover this one as well. Let's see how our lids are doing. They seem to be covered. The color is very similar. Here, I will show you with a different angle. This is nickel. This is an alloy of aluminum and zinc without a coating. And this is a silver coating. And there, we have a reaction. And our lids are already nickel coated, so now we go and relic them. Our oxidation solution consists of ferric chloride. I think that's enough for us. We mix ferric chloride with warm water. Well, the lumps dissolve very quickly, almost immediately. So I matted it a little bit. And now I will degrease it, so that we have the whole process fine and even. I will degrease it. So, this is our acetone. Acetone evaporates instantly. Literally 10 seconds is enough for now. Here... And into the water. Actually, such a matte effect is enough to relic the covers. Now I apply a little more matting. Let's immerse the lids. Over time the transparency of the solutions goes away. If you forget a screw, for example, or any small part in a container with a solution, then it can become covered with a thick layer of rust, which can simply kill it, and sometimes some parts simply dissolve. For example, a switch ring, switchcraft. It's somewhere here. Here the ring is. If you forget it in solution, this part can dissolve and break off. Brass is very quickly corroded by ferric chloride. So, be careful with delicate parts. So, what's going on here? Well, great. It's the same here. So, now I will engage myself in a decorative activity. I am drawing strips of oxides under the strings. This pattern adds a very light tone. Something like this. That's the method. Now it will dry out a little and the reaction will start. This pattern adds a little greenish effect. Here, stripes have already appeared significantly, so I will clean them up a little. 
It's already much better. Maybe they're there, maybe they're not. I will take a piece of felt. Here, not for very long. Well, the result is very good. Very beautiful. You can stop at any stage, actually. But I like it when it's very, very beautiful. Now we will leave it to dry. Here, these droplets dried up and oxidized the surface. I really like the original cover that was on my Les Paul. It also has the same dots. Therefore, this is my reference. Well, my friends, our magnet drivers, our screws are ready. I've put it in VD40 for a bit to deactivate the reaction. These are wonderful rusty hats. Well, here is the result of relicking our lids. Dots turned out wonderfully, somewhat greenish. This is how it will look on the pickup itself. Well, everything is ready for our greeny pickups. Well, my friends, I think this experiment was very informative. I will still refine and fine-tune the technology, because after some time nuances appeared on my bridges, after chemical nickel plating. This needs to be fixed, and I actually understand why it happened, how it happens, and what needs to be done so this does not happen in the future. So I will continue to work. I hope that after some time I will be able to make my copies of both the bridge and the tail pieces in a cheaper way, in a faster way and they will be available for purchase. But for now, I am going to modify the bridges, and we will try to cover the tail pieces in different ways with nickel, and I think that I will try to do electroplating. It will be interesting. So, thank you for staying with me, supporting me. Only thanks to you I now have the ability to conduct such experiments, make good translations and improve the general quality of the content. So again, thank you. Until next time.